Brian Tierney from Lean Made Simple and our next presentation on day two of the Two Second Lean Summit was by Stephen Kelly from Manufacturing NI and he talked about all the benefits of being based in Northern Ireland and all the benefits uh, that uh, come with being established as a Northern Irish company. So we're really fortunate to have Stephen uh, at the event and to open the second day. So we really hope you enjoy Stephen's presentation. There's obviously people here from, from Northern Ireland. There's people here from uh, the island of Ireland, uh, these islands and across the globe. And it was very kind of uh, the people seeking matters to provide me with the opportunity just to very quickly give you a quick insight into what is the opportunity that is Northern Ireland. When you're traveling here, when you're talking to people across the world, why would they consider Northern Ireland as a place potentially to come and establish and set up a business, just like Seaton Matters or others uh, in this place. So I wonder to start with the world's simplest quiz. If anybody can tell me what the connection is between all of these images, I'll get out of your road. There's a quick answer and it's correct. So we have a real history here of innovation. The very first top image, the modern tractor, the Ferguson three-point hitch. Uh, picked up by Henry Ford, the Ford Ferguson tractor was transformed agriculture in many respects and that hitch is still used to this very day. So all modern agriculture is dependent upon that Ferguson hitch that was designed and made originally here in Northern Ireland. The pneumatic tire, Dunlop invented the pneumatic tire not far from here uh, in uh, County Antrim. The far right hand corner, the portable defibrillator. Frank Pantridge invented that here in Northern Ireland. That portable defibrillator saved millions of lives right across the world. I was talking to a friend just yesterday, he was involved in a park run, and they happened to have a portable defibrillator on the park run, and the guy who was responsible for the park run took a heart attack in the middle of the run. And the defibrillator that he fundraised for and got the money for actually ended up saving his own life. But that defibrillator to this day is in every, there's one here in the hotel, but it's in every, uh, every important venue right across the world, including in the White House, because I saw the one in the White House. The bottom corner here, fertilizer, again invented by a Northern Ireland man. Sadly, we used it for other purposes here in Northern Ireland for a period of time, which we won't go into. But fertilizer uh, transformed agriculture, and it's because of Northern Ireland. Milk of magnesia, maybe one or two people requiring that this morning after one or two many beers last night, and certainly in connection with the last one, which is milk chocolate. So people from Northern Ireland invented milk chocolate. So we have an incredible, incredible industrial heritage, which designed, which is built around the ingenuity and the entrepreneurship of the people that we've had and continue to have here in Northern Ireland. But this place had a very difficult past. I'm sure many people thought about traveling here, were worried about uh, some of the things they've heard or saw about Northern Ireland in the past. But 25 years ago, our people came together, our politicians came together with the British and Irish governments with the support of the United States. And we created our, what's called the Good Friday Peace Agreement. And that has absolutely transformed this place in the last 25 years. So if you just look at some of the kind of top line numbers. Our GDP has grown by 120%. Our GDP per capita has grown by 91%. You can see a disconnect there. Lean sits in that space, I would say. Our unemployment is down from 8.4% to 2.5%. 50% of our population is under 40 years of age. More, there's 50% more young people in full-time education now than there were back in 1998. And, as you've probably experienced in the last 24 hours, this is actually the happiest place in the United Kingdom. Now, that will come as a deep surprise to everybody from Northern Ireland in the room. <laughs> because we all think we're really miserable, we love complaining about stuff. In fact, we're never happier than when we're miserable. So, but, we are the happiest place in the UK, and there's a reason for that. When you've seen some of that yesterday, <clears throat> when you've seen the stuff that's been going on, with the Tierney family and the team that they have working with them. This is a place of real community where people know each other, respect each other, look out for each other and care for each other. 
And that's the real core of what makes this place such the happiest place in the United Kingdom. But there's more still to do. So obviously when you reflect back across 25 years, you also kind of look forward and see what the opportunity is. And the cards have kind of fallen pretty well for Northern Ireland, which I'll talk about in a second. But all the economists are saying that we've grown doubled our, more than doubled our GDP in the last 25 years. Well, actually in the next 10 years, we can grow that by uh, the same amount again and more with the opportunity that now exists here. Just a very quick chart. That's the Northern Ireland economy. That big purple pizza slice in the corner is manufacturing, uh, is their production sector, and manufacturing dominates that. And I'm using that because it's really important. Manufacturing is in our blood here. It's a much more important part of the Northern Ireland economy than it is in terms of the rest of the UK economy, and it always has been. People like making things with their hands and selling them to markets at home and abroad in this part of the world. And we do it with great people. So since 2010, 21% more people are employed in manufacturing in Northern Ireland than were back uh, over that period in time. So as manufacturing employment seems to be declining in modern uh, first world societies over the last number of years, actually in Northern Ireland, we've added an extra fifth approaching a quarter in the last 13 years. And what it means is that in this part of the world, one in four families rely upon a manufacturing wage in order to sustain their family, to run their homes, to give themselves a holiday, to put food on the table. It's a massive part of our community. It's a massive part of our economy. And these are well-paid, sustainable jobs, really in places that people want to call home. Uh, Seed Matters isn't based in the center of a city. It's based in Glack, in a townland between Derry and Limavady, between Grey Steel and Ballykelly even. <laughs> even gets even more small and unique there. Why? Because that's who they are. It's part of who they are. The people that are working there come from those rural communities as well. They want to set up home, join their local associations, contribute to their local community and, and their local economy, to build a house, a family, send their kids to the same primary school that they went to. These are really important jobs because they're not in the cities in particular. And what we know, and it's not just here in Northern Ireland, but globally, when manufacturing grows, the entire economy grows with it. I don't know if that was me. The entire economy grows with it. So we need to take the opportunity that exists with our great makers to ensure that we can actually continue to contribute more to that community. But the world's changing. Uh, it comes with some great threats, which potentially for some could be existential. But as manufacturers know, in the middle of threat comes opportunity as well. And I'm showing these not because I've actually got much nicer pictures of me and my holiday up until Wednesday of last week, but we're incredibly well connected in this part of the world. Look at the current UK Prime Minister, the kind of tousle haired blondie guy, used to be Prime Minister before he got kicked out, the President of the United States, number 10 Downing Street. Incredibly important people. Whether we like these people or not is irrelevant. The role and function that they have, the office that they hold is the important thing. But their attention is on this little tiny place, a part of an island, off an island, off a continent of 1.9 million people. And we need to capitalize on that political capital that's available. So lots of really important people like Martin Tierney, for instance, here are actually trying their best to try to make this place really work. And when the Prime Minister was here back in February when he'd done his deal, <clears throat> he coined that phrase about Northern Ireland being the most exciting economic zone in the world. And I sat, I sat beside him initially and then I, I watched him giving that speech. And he's incredibly passionate and he's trying to deliver on that. So next week, there's 800 investors coming to Northern Ireland for an investment conference in Belfast. People traveling from right across the world, there's going to be at least two jobs announcements at that. Why? Because of that personal commitment of not only the Prime Minister, but also the President of the United States, Joe Biden, who came here earlier this year, and the attention that they have on this little tiny place that for some reason holds the attention and has a little piece of the heart of these leaders on an international stage. So the President is committed to sending loads of people here. He's appointed 
a special economic entity, a special economic envoy, Joe Kennedy III, very famous name, the Kennedy name. Uh, he's bringing some of those people along to this conference, or this uh, summit next week, and then he's running his own mission in October as well. So we're at the cusp of something incredibly important. And why is that? It's because of the way the cards have fallen, primarily in terms of Brexit. So the UK decided to leave the EU. That's been a very difficult, challenging period for not just the EU, but also the United Kingdom themselves. And a special arrangement has been made for here in Northern Ireland that ensured that we don't have any infrastructure on the border between the north of Ireland and the south of Ireland. So what they arrived at was a thing called the Northern Ireland Protocol. It's been improved to second lane under uh, what's called the Windsor Framework. And effectively what it means is that we've ended up with this trading regime. So if you're here in Northern Ireland, you have free access to the whole of the UK marketplace, which is 60 million people, and free access north and south, and free access out to Europe. If you're in Ireland, you have borders between these places. And if you're in Northern Ireland, you have a border slightly between Northern Ireland in terms of your supply chain. Uh, so that Windsor framework has resulted in us having a very unique, in fact, nowhere else in the world has that type of access to all of those marketplaces as we do. Put simply, Northern Ireland has become probably the most attractive place in Europe to invest and sustain a manufacturing and distribution business. ESG, massive problem, massive issue. Whether we believe it or not, it's irrelevant. It's what's driving us on. Our, our companies now are moving away from a defensive play, about ESG being the cost of entry into business and actually taking it in terms of an opportunity. Uh, people. And it's the same with every single business in this room. Where have all the people gone, particularly since COVID? It seems like the world has run out of people to, to, do, to do the work. Well, for us, we're advising firms to assume from this day forward you will never be able to recruit anyone ever again. Why do we do that? Why do we put such an extreme challenge on people? We need them as leaders to think differently about what they do in their business. And this is where this conference comes in, uh, into play. It's actually about changing how we do what we do. It's about being more efficient. It's about creating better workplaces, improving the jobs of every single person there to make them sticky. Because if you can't recruit anyone, you've got to retain the people that you have. And secondly, to make sure we get more out of the people that we have within our businesses. <clears throat> so at the start, I explained some of the massive globally significant and life-changing inventions that we've had from people from this place. But that continues to this day. So, as an example, over the last number of months, 80% of our electricity generated here was generated out of renewable sources. That's world leading. No one else has got anywhere near 60%, but we're able to do 80% at certain points in time. The very grainy image in the middle, those who were lucky enough to have a business class flight here to Northern Ireland, you're very likely to be sitting on a chair that was made here in Northern Ireland. One third of all the business class seats in airlines across the globe are made just here with these 1.9 million people that we have, and very many of the normal seats elsewhere in the plane. This other image to the top left hand side. It's a reed head from Seagate Technology. One in four of all electronic devices in the world have a little piece of Northern Ireland right in the middle of them. Doesn't matter if it's a computer or a watch or a phone or whatever, but one in four of all electronic devices in the world have a piece of Northern Ireland in them. Bottom side, 40% of the materials handling equipment in the world, so stuff for mines and quarries and recycling facilities are all made in a little triangle in Northern Ireland, 40% of the global supply of those here with our 1.9 million people. And the bottom side here, one in 10 of the entire population of the globe has had a test made in Northern Ireland by Randox. So we're a tiny place, but we're having a massive global significance. And this is the next one. This chair, the purple, the red dot, sorry, the purple dot's a different thing. Uh, People here are trying to make a difference every day to the community in which they serve, but also the customers in which they serve. We heard that so eloquently mentioned yesterday by Jonathan. So the opportunity here is that we have an incredibly industrious, ingenious 
happy young population. There's a massive opportunity in terms of market access. We have all the political influence that we require. So if you're thinking about a place to come and invest, a place to come and set up your next manufacturing business, there's nowhere better than Northern Ireland. Thanks very much.